So now let's talk about dealing with a multi-product series. So and the first technique, which is massively used by futures traders, are so-called futures draw. So let's uh, take a look at the example. So building trading strategies on futures contracts has the unique problem that the given contract has expiration date. For example, three months, co three months contract on wheat or, for example, uh, quarterly contract on uh, S&P 500 futures e-mini. So these contracts are uh, expiring. Comparing to uh, stocks which don't have expiration date, we need to somehow deal with this kind of problem. So however, a problem occurs, which is come to expiry date, there is usually a price difference between the old contract and the new one. And often this difference is quite small. However, for some products, it can be quite substantial, especially if the underlying asset has high carry costs. So on the right hand side, you can see the plot which shows um, how um, a futures contract uh, expires and the next contract comes into, uh, becomes active. So uh, this type of futures contract, we call them front month uh, contract or active futures contract. And we need to somehow take into account this role adjustment. Why is this so important? Because if we try to build, for example, SMA or various trend features, if we don't take, it, take into account this price gap when, the co when contracts are rolled, we will get a better representation of trend because if, for example, one front month's contract expires today and the new contract start, uh, becomes active and starts to trade at a much higher price, our SMA would say that there is a huge price increase in commodity or futures. But actually, it is not. It is only explained by the fact that the new contract has much more days uh, to expiry and that's why um, its price is higher comparing to the previous contract. Because as we all know, uh, when coming to expiry, futures co future contract starts to converge to spot value. So how do we take into account this offset? Sometimes uh, we uh, call it also carry cost uh, or future draw. So here we can see that we need to, to somehow offset these differences to make a so-called continuous contract. So we have understood that we need to adjust prices to reflect price changes when contracts are rolled. So how can we do that? There are two common approaches in contracts rolling. So the first one is forward roll, and the second one is backward roll. Based on research requirements, future, we uh, may decide what kind of returns we'd like to preserve. If we want to preserve the relative return, so the relative difference between the first contract and the next contract, we uh, use so-called relatively adjusted continuous contract. If we want to preserve absolute, re absolute returns, meaning that we want to uh, preserve the price difference uh, between two contracts, we use absolute returns. So how do we take into account these um, adjustments? In futures role, so this is actually the, the procedure which is called futures role. So what we do, we need to calculate the adjustment factor. How the adjustment factor is calculated? Let's take back uh, at the picture on the previous slide. So when new contract expires, we know the close price of expiring contract. And when the next contract becomes active, we know the open price of the new contract. And we can find either the price differences between open of the new contract and close of the previous contract, or we can, we can find a percent change between these two. And this is called the adjustment factor. One important note is that the adjustment factor is either cumul is, is cumulative if we use absolute returns and we use cumulative product when we um, uh, generate relative adjustment, meaning that we, when we calculate new adjustment factor, we multiply the previous value of adjustment factor by either price difference or relative difference. So here you can see the formula. So the new adjustment factor equals to previous adjustment factor multiplied by the next contract open divided by previous contract close. If we would like to preserve absolute returns, we add 
next contract open minus previous contract cl close to previous adjustment factor. So in, in this way, we can generate adjusted contract prices and they can be used in first feature generation, especially trend uh, feature generation uh, trend features. Secondly, we can use it for PL calculations uh, and backtesting, and third, mark to market calculations. But there is a small and important note that if you define the, the size of your position, you still need to use unadjusted prices, of course, because at the end you trade the real asset. Why it is also very important to use continuous contract in your backtesting. Uh, procedure. Let's take for, uh, let's take uh, example on the next slide. So here we can see two plots. So on the left hand side you can see forward adjusted relative continuous contract, and on the right hand side uh, you can see unadjusted contract, meaning that we just simply stitched uh, prices together without taking into account any um, adjustment factor. So as you can see, these plots are quite different. So here we can see continuous contract for SRV, SRW, with which trades on CBOT exchange. So if we, for example, would like to simply hold one futures contract of SRW read, our PNL would look like um, the picture on the left on the left hand side, not on the right hand side. And as you can see, we can uh, we would constantly uh, lose um, money by simply uh, holding uh, nearest futures contract of SRW wheat. What is the reason for that? Because agricultural commodities has have quite high carry costs, and this carry cost is um, taken into account uh, when we build relatively adjusted continuous contract. So as you can see here, this curve can be used to, to track our PNL, not the one which is on the right hand side. That is why if you don't adjust your futures contract role in your feature generation or a PNL calculations, your calculations can be very misleading. So let's take a look at the example at the code example um, on the um, on the on the slide. So here we use function which is called MLC lab, multi-product, get futures role series. In order to use this function, we need to um, create a data frame which uh, looks uh, like formatted in the next way. We need open, actually uh, we need open column, close column, ticker column, and nearest contract column. So what are, are two these, co these columns mean? So we need to create a data frame which contains all uh, currently active futures contract for this date. So ticker means actually the, the ticker of the futures contract for this timestamp. And the nearest contract is, an, is the ticker of the front month's contract. So let's take a look, for example. Let's go back into uh, SRWV futures contract. So right now is March and the nearest contract is uh, the one which expires in May. But also at the same time, we also have actively trade in June contract and September contract. So all these three instruments are actively traded right now. But May contract, the one which expires in May is the most actively traded. So in the same day, we have three contracts which are traded, right? And in this case, in our data frame, we would have three contracts. Ticker, tickers will be different for each of them. So the first one would have ticker ESM 2021. Um, the, the second one would have June uh, ticker and the, the third one would have September ticker. But nearest contract value would equal to ESM 2021 because right now the nearest active ticker is May futures contract. So when we create this type of uh, data frame, we need to filter out those roles. Uh, we need to filter out um, only rows which ticker equaling to nearest contract. So we only need days and uh, records of our bars of actively traded contract. After, after that, we can create uh, adjustment factors. 
by using get futures role series function, which takes into account our data frame. Uh, it, it, it needs the string representation of your open and close column. It needs string re representation of your ticker column and the string representation of your nearest contract. So basically you need to specify in which columns uh, we have the information which is needed for futures role. When we apply that uh, function, we generate a we generate a set of uh, adjustment factors, which we also need to apply to our close prices. So in the final say cell, you can see that uh, if we want to preserve absolute returns, we subtract roll gaps absolute from close prices. And if we would like to get a relative relative adjustment for futures contract, we, we divide roll gaps relative to close prices uh, of our nearest contract. So let's um, repeat that again. First of all, you need to gather all your bars into one data frame. You need to, each of them has ticker and for each date you have ticker name of the nearest contract. So today is March and the nearest contract of SRW with is um, ESM 2021. When May comes, the nearest contract uh, ticker would be the June contract. After that, you pass that into ML lab, multi-product, get futures role series function. Based on your needs, you can either choose forward or backward role or absolute or relative uh, returns preserving. Based on that, you, you have a series of adjustment factors. After that, you need to filter out your data frame where ticker equals to the nearest contract only. If we filter out this data frame, we and plot close prices, we should get the picture on the right hand side. But when we divide or either divide or subtract adjustment factor from our close prices, we would get the picture on the left hand side. So that's how futures role contract works. And it is extremely useful and important technique if you deal with future series in your algorithmic trading strategy research.